everyone. Happy Thanksgiving week last week and welcome to episode 391. This is This Is Whole Life from Whole Life Church in Orlando, Florida. Every week we get to dig deeper with you all into the messages that we are talking about here at Whole Life Church. And of course, we take your questions. And if you say, well, how do I send in my question? It's 407-965-1607. We'll get you a text message or voicemail or podcast at Whole Life dot church i, I have a said, question you have ooh. okay a uh, gentleman to my right uh has a question <laughs> he didn't raise his hand but i'm gonna take it anyway <laughs> how did they don't know that i didn't raise my hand maybe i did raise my maybe you're not telling the truth maybe it's, I did very, raise my it's hand. very possible who are you gonna believe <laughs> yeah mm. it's, it's we aren't coming into we were just talking politics so who are you gonna believe ken ken or randy who sounds more honest who sounds more sincere don't answer that question <laughs> yeah don't right. please i don't so, um, i don't want to lose so I have a question. So what did everybody have? So we always talk food. What was what was on oh, the menu for on. Thanksgiving? You stole my notes. Oh, was that on your notes? <laughs> right here. All right. Best Thanksgiving oh, food. I did. Yeah, yeah, you did. Go for it, though. Okay. All right. No, I'm so, just curious. Uh, Jeff, you... let's start with you. Well, we had we had a different kind of Thanksgiving. What'd you we do? Did. We didn't normally we normally would do the traditional, but um, my my wife first of all made some carbonara. I don't know if you're familiar Tell with that. Tell us what carbonara is, is cuz I don't know. It's a um, eggplant and it's a it's a warm dish. It's not a hot dish. Warm. And it's okay. Italian, Sicilian. If you ever get to Sicily, it's all every restaurant has it. Okay. It's one of your favorites, I'm guessing. It's one hers? of my favorites. Both? Yeah, it okay. is. It nice. is truly. But we also, <laughs> she made that, and then we went and had and ordered some Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, yeah. well. Um, Melanie? Our, oh, you want to go? Melanie, let's, yeah, we'll finish with me. Go ahead. Oh, I, uh, <clears throat> well, I made, well, first of all, I was kind of flying solo because yeah. my husband's out of town. Nobody nobody came to see me. Nashville Tim was Fort Myers Tim I'm for Nashville the Tim. Yes, exactly. Oh, so man. I got, I was invited over to some, some people's house who took, who take in strays on Thanksgiving. Did and they so take good care of you? They took good care of me. Mm. They had most yummy mashed potatoes and I made some, um, Pumpkin cheesecakes, some little Ooh. pumpkin cheesecakes, Ooh. and they actually turned out. They actually turned out pretty good. So, by the way, I would like to make a public service announcement. PSA: If you currently have leftovers in your refrigerator, they have officially crossed the line and are no longer fit to be oh, eaten. Oh, that is that true? Is that I'm, I'm just that saying. It? I'm just saying. We're not even yeah. a week out. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm, I'm rolling the dice. Unless no. it's caponata. It actually stays okay. <laughs> well, maybe it depends on what it is. <laughs> so what's the line? Where's the line at? I, know, I have not heard this I before. Know this. I didn't yeah. know there was a line. Uh, well, you know, you you don't have to wait until it turns green. <laughs> you, can, you can actually stop eating it before that. Is that, that so? <laughs> really? Okay. Man, you've right. just changed my life in one second. Wow. There you go. Man, yeah. that's that, awesome. That's kind of news. You're, you're welcome. All, All right. right. Ken. Yeah, we're vegetarian, so we did uh, a very traditional vegetarian special K loaf. Oh, is uh, oh, dude, there you go. Now, my wife introduced me. I'm not a huge fan of special K loaf. If you don't know what this is, I'll just it's basically uh, special K the cereal. <laughs> Everybody's like going mixed with uh, <laughs> there's cottage cheese, cheese in it, and nuts, if you prefer. nuts, spices, all that good stuff. Well. The best way to do it is the way that my wife does it. And she actually puts them in muffin tins because the uh, best part of any cottage is cheese the crust. Is, is the crust. And so That's when you put it in idea. a muffin tin, it's a good it, gives idea. You, it gives you more crust crunch. More crispy. No, because you just, you just grease it good. I would just throw the pans out what? and then I would agree that that, I mean, it is the tastiest way, but if I have to do the dishes, I'm throwing the pan out. Yeah, my, my daughter tried to get away with that. I just not even that. That's that, more so. work. That's just more work than I want. So yeah, so we did that. We did stuffing. We did the, uh, you know... Uh, oh, I, I made a green bean casserole that I thought was Wait. pretty good. A green bean, yeah, Ooh, yeah that was a good. A green bean casserole yeah. with the onions on top. Yeah, and we had uh, some really good uh, sweet potato casserole. That was super good. Um, threw in, uh, threw in. I uh, took some pecans and yeah. sugared Doctored those things, and yeah, nice. That yeah, was pretty good. So there you go. My wife tried a new thing this year with uh, apple pie. I love apple pie. I love apple yeah. pie better mm. than pumpkin pie. Me she too. did make Big pumpkin time. pie. Yeah. I should make pumpkin pie too, um, and we kind of had our argument that, about it. it. wasn't a, a knockdown drag out one. <laughs> Your face looks good because <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my mom has always made pumpkin pie. My mom's gone now, so she gave my wife the recipe, and I told her that it didn't quite taste like mom's. Oh, 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 yes. oh, Jeff, you're a marriage counselor. You know better you know, than that. If you still <laughs> had a second shot at that, you you're would. like, it tasted better. What I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't quite taste way better. You would think. 
<laughs> Actually, um, it was fun because we en- we enjoyed it. But she made a pear and apple pie, Ooh. Okay. Ooh. which was excellent. I'm I'll bet have, that I think would that's going to be a tradition from now. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, uh, the the McGrays are known as last minuteers, um, <laughs> just because life is busy. And I knew that Melanie was astray, and so we invited, but she had already found a home. Yes. And so then I didn't realize that my cousin Tom was also here by himself, so we invited him over. And Heather's been in this new thing with um, sourdough bread starter. Ooh. So mm, you constantly yeah. have the, the, it's not leftover. And, and it's a starter. It's a, it's starter, a starter, but yeah. you, you have the, there's something that's when it's leftover, there's something they call that. Hmm. And so you always have extra as you're, you know, make another loaf. So she made uh, breadsticks and uh, rolls. Mm. Oh, uh, sourdough. Good. So that was good. She makes a, an apple pie. Jeff, I'm with you. Uh, I do yep. like pumpkin on Thanksgiving, and she made homemade whipped cream in the in yep. the kitchen aid, did yep. nice and fluffy. Mm. And she made an apple pie, low sugar, gluten free crust, because you know yep. the girls are that way. And the, oh, the apple pie was so good. And then. Uh, <clears throat> Because we're last minuteers, we forgot that we needed something for Emily because she won't eat turkey. She won't. And we had a chicken this year. With the turkey, we didn't throw out in time, so we we just got a chicken. <laughs> they were ninety nine cents a pound at Aldi, so we had a chicken in the Instapot, which was really delicious. Uh, of course, mashed potatoes, and there was some. Uh, Heather makes a green bean, yeah, something or other like that, and then. We're like, what's Emily going to eat besides mashed potatoes? Because she doesn't like any of the rest of it. So it was cottage cheese loaf. Boom. Mm-hmm. Except that Tur- on Thanksgiving Day, when you realize that Target, and eh, Aldi, and eh, Publix, <laughs> eh, and I'm like, grocery stores. I'm in my truck sitting on 436, and I type, <laughs> grocery stores near me that are open. <laughs> and Whole Foods in Altamont was open. I'm like, I don't believe this. Wow. Dial the number. Hi, this is Craig at Whole Foods. We are open till three. How can I help you? Click <laughs> and drive. Just get there. Well, guess what? Whole Foods does not sell said special really? K. Okay. Really? No. Randy, you should have stopped it by. Really I had a whole food. So you should have called had me it in up. My but refrigerator. Had extra. But yeah. check it out. I did. I did all right. So I'm, I'm shopping. And I'm like, okay, they've got these organic. Cornflakes for twenty three ninety nine a box. Uh, no, they weren't, they weren't quite that bad. <laughs> and we needed cottage cheese. We didn't have enough, so I was able to run to the store. It only took me about two and a half hours because number one, everyone was at that store because yep. it's the only place open. <laughs> two, I don't know where to find anything. Oh, and I needed. I made some. I made some uh, Danny Hernandez. If you're listening, I made your grandmother's Cuban espresso recipe on the mocha pot on the stove, mm-hmm. and that requires a little uh, cinnamon sticks for fresh mm-hmm. ground cinnamon on the top. After you froth the cream on top, <laughs> and so that was dessert for me. So that's what we had. But the cornflakes, nice. honestly, uh, we're worked thinking, out pretty good. We're actually thinking about not doing the. It doesn't turn dark brown okay. like you would normal. It's more of a light brown, yellowish mm-hmm. kind of thing because of the cornflakes. Yeah. I'm telling you, you the cornflakes huh? was pretty legit. You know, if you want to make it gluten free, use Rice Krispies instead. There you go. Ah, well, cornflakes should be if they're organic. Well, maybe not. Not gluten free. I think they. Well, these might have been gluten. I don't know. They probably weren't. Anyway, we, we, if we they were are, close. then yeah. I have just added another cereal to my list. Yeah. No, dude, they were. <laughs> but we were really concerned that it was it was really going to be bad, and Emmy wasn't going to like it, and then her. Mm. Her Thanksgiving would have been only pie and mashed potatoes and, Randy, and bread. I, I want to take a moment to defend you against the person out there that was thinking, oh, my word, you went to a store and made some poor person work for you on Thanksgiving I Day. I have no problem with that. <laughs> my daughter, because I was there's something came up at our house and we were talking about going and getting something. And I was like, you're going to go make somebody work on Thanksgiving Day. I was like, no, you don't understand. If you have ever had to work on Thanksgiving or a holiday, which I have. The worst thing that can happen <laughs> is that nobody, nobody shows, shows up, up. Oh, and you no. sit there and you're like, so I gave up my Thanksgiving and nobody was and here. nobody was even here. Why were we even open? I could be at home watching yeah. the Packers. Yeah. So there you go. in my opinion, if yeah. there's a store that's open on Thanksgiving or Christmas, you should absolutely go there just to make the people there feel like their sacrifice was worth something. Now, I smiled <laughs> at everyone I asked <laughs> for help because I asked every employee in there. I had like eight things on my list and I had to ask every time where to yeah. find them because I couldn't find them. And one of the one of the stock people, a very nice lady, I don't remember her name, but she had the coolest Van Halen tattoo in history on her arm. So I had to compliment that. <laughs> the guy that was in the checkout line, he was just like, hey, 
uh, happy Thanksgiving. I'm like, happy Thanksgiving to you. I said, you know what? I am sorry. I hung up the phone on you on accident. I didn't really mean to hang up on him. I was going to say I was coming and I kind of dropped the phone and it hung up on him. I'm like, so happy Thanksgiving to you. Shook his hand. Nice guy. Everyone at the store was really, really nice. So I made sure to be kind and thankful and that you're open today to save my to save my bacon and my daughter will actually have something to eat for Thanksgiving because <laughs> sometimes we forget that she doesn't eat like everybody else. So <laughs> Ken starts the war early on in the message. It's it's like it felt a little bit like cats versus dogs. Why? Because <laughs> Ken you, How did you, you get that out because of Because you're 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 you were like well it was Kyla, then it was Kyle and then it was Zag. Zag mm-hmm. at the end, which we found out later. If you go back and watch the sermon, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you how it got to be Zag, but if you go back and watch the sermon, you yeah, actually won't get it out of the sermon. I think you have to go to Second Service Q and A. Q and A. But if you go to the Whole Life Church on the front page, that is the message. It is Second Service. <laughs> and if you go to swipe up in today's show notes and hit the link to okay. Speaking of Grace, you will also hear how Kyla became Kyle. And then became Zeg the cat, not Kyla, right. the, not Kyla the daughter, Kyla no, the cat. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a good story in there. You got a deal for a hundred bucks, man. That cat's pretty cool. <laughs> that's that's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah, I got a deal. <laughs> <laughs> he's the gift they kept giving, and that <laughs> cat got a deal. He's like Jelly yeah. the Month Club, the gift that keeps on giving. Plus, yeah, the cat writes sermons. Yeah, exactly. For a hundred bucks, how can you go wrong? Now that's that's a good point. Now that you you made now, just, now that you phrase it that way. Yeah, no, I, I really I really thought you you came out on that one pretty good, even though it looked grim at the start. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> just like my pocketbook doesn't feel like it. And if you're not sure why, go go uh, go catch the message because it was a, a very entertaining but poignant part of the sermon that made a good life lesson and a good uh, drawback to what we were talking about. And if uh, Derek Morris, you are listening to this and you watch my sermon, I apologize. Derek Morris? Yeah. Did I miss something? No. Uh, he was, well, he taught me homiletics. Oh, dude. And, oh, uh, okay. oh, and what the thing Derek told you is that your your opening illustration should never be longer than the rest of the story. <laughs> of the sermon. Yeah, but you know, once you know the rules, then yeah, you can, then you can break, break them. I think uh, Derek, I think you should watch the message before passing judgment because uh, no, it was good. Derek, don't don't watch the message. <laughs> <laughs> Just you have a lot of better things to do with your life. <laughs> well. It, when you think about Thanksgiving, I really, one of the best parts of the sermon, it was just a reminder of the goodness and the unfailing yeah. love. And that was, you know, the words you put out, like yeah. for goodness, you could pack well, excellent, happy, agreeable, good, pleasant, fair, kind, an unfailing love, faithfulness, kindness, zeal, compassion, beauty, grace, steadfast, and mercy. And when you combined those all on the screen, and I think that was Melanie making those yeah, actually move did. across she the did. screen. Yeah, she crushed them all It together. was Ken's vision. <laughs> I was just trying to make it come to life. <laughs> no, but, but it really it really was powerful watching each of those words and, and thinking about them and just kind of looking at each one thinking, yeah, that's really nice. That's well, I can, you know, the kind of the the feelings that each one of those evokes. And then you 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 see them kind of get mashed in and go, that's what this is all about in those two pieces. And that God pursues us through these words until I will return to the house of the Lord for the length of the days. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess I've never really thought about it in that order. You, you know, we've heard that, it, you know, surely goodness and mercy and we'll follow you through and all this stuff. But thinking about it in this way and returning to the house of the Lord and this, I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm seeing where I'm going next. But for many of us that maybe have taken a longer detour around to come back to God's house or maybe, I don't know. I I debate sometimes. People say, "I don't know if you were ever in the in the house of the Lord before." <laughs> you know, you're technically coming back because you know it didn't seem so sincere. Maybe and I, and maybe that's it's it's probably true. But one of the things that if you've taken that route, the thing you don't want is for other people to miss the beauty of being in the house of of the Lord now, and that taking the long way around. Sometimes seems fun. It seems all those, all the trappings of the world or, or the different pieces, but to actually think of someone that gets to spend all that time there and their growth happens earlier and they learn more faster and they, they get to absorb it and they get to know that peace that you have now. There's a lot of times I could have used that peace a lot, a lot sooner in my life through things that I went through. 
And I, I just, that part made me feel really, really good inside about, you know, what we, what, how we try to welcome everyone here at Whole Life and just get you to, you know, taste and see, see that there are others that are enjoying this. And I, I'm not sure how to, how to put it into words, but the invitation to be there and, and to, and to, re- that it's, it's here and now we don't have to wait to get to heaven. There's a peace and there's a, there's a house of the Lord here. It's as close as the breath in front of your face. You know, he's here with you. The Holy Spirit is here with you. And then I tried all morning to think I got up at six this morning cause this was bugging me hmm. of how I was trying to describe this. And I haven't done, I don't think I've done a very good job, but when you realize how important and how much better your life is, no matter how, ugly things may look on the outside, even to yourself (laughs) uh, and what other people might see. It's such a blessing to not have to take the long way around. I mean, I think there's lessons to be learned. There's all those kinds of things, but to, to extend the invitation. And I just, I've been thinking, how can we, because I think that's what you said, but I'm not sure that Randy 25 years ago would have understood what really how important that was. And I do now, and I don't know how to say how important it is that people understand that now that, you know, don't, yeah, the other things can look great, but this man, had I, had I really understood this, I feel like it would have made a difference if someone had presented it in this way, but maybe, I I don't know. It's, I'm. Yeah. But I think that, um, one of the, I think that we all return to the house, the Lord in God's good time. Mm. I don't know if that's, I should maybe, maybe saying all is not the right thing to say. I don't know. But what I guess I mean by that is that you, you take a look when Jesus tells his, his, you know, three part parable about missing two missing things or a missing animal and a missing object and a missing person. And you take a look and in the first two stories, um, you know, the shepherd goes looking, um, the woman goes looking for the coin. And then you have finally the, uh, missing son who nobody goes looking for. And that basically returns home when he realizes his great need. I think you can, I think that, I think that probably most of us get to some point where we recognize that whatever it is that we're doing is not particularly satisfying us. It's not really where we're at. And I know there's some people you go a lifetime and never necessarily do that. But I see it happen so many times that people will say, Randy, you need to come back to church, Randy, you know, and you try to, you, you know, I remember trying to share, um, you know, this one particular piece of doctrine with somebody I was doing Bible studies with, and I did it 15 different times, 15 different ways. And just every time she's like, <laughs> I, yeah, I no, you're wrong. I don't Yeah, that it. doesn't you know, make sense. Makes no sense. Yeah. And I remember just being at a, <laughs> at a prayer meeting and one of the sweet older ladies in our church made this, what I would consider to be very simplistic explanation of this complex theological point. And the lady looked at me and she's, and the person oh, no. was like, why can't you explain it? Like that totally makes sense. And boom, there it was, you know? It was. And, and so I think that sometimes maybe we wind ourselves a little bit up trying to get Randy to come back home. Yeah. As opposed to just letting the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does. And yeah, does that mean I don't invite Randy home? Of course I do. Do I, but do I get wound up when Randy doesn't, you know, can, you know, do what I want him to do? And what I mean, and do, or do I just go ahead and, hey, Randy's on his journey. I love, I'll keep loving Randy, putting the invitation out there as it is. And by the way, the final part of that, you know, the missing, the missing son is that and Tim Keller makes the the really very cool observation that in that story, um, Jesus is pointing out that it's actually the older brother that was supposed to be going and looking for that missing brother it, and, and letting in the time and culture that it was the older brother's job to bring reconciliation if there was a rift between one of the other siblings and the father. And, and so Tim points out that in that story, we, we look at it and we like, why didn't anybody go looking? Well, it was because the older brother was supposed to. And so when he says, all these years haven't I been doing what you wanted me to do, he actually hadn't. He hadn't 
been doing what the father really wanted him to do. And I think that's also another beautiful point is that each one of us has the responsibility to be inviting people to come home, not forcing them. I don't think the father expected the older brother to, you know, find the younger brother, knock him out, throw him over his shoulder and bring him home. I, but he, I think what he wanted the older brother to do is at least let that younger brother know dad wants you to come home. Dad longs for you to come home. And I think that's our responsibility in the Christian realm is not to beat people up with the gospel and you need to do this, you need to, but just say, hey, dad wants you to come home. Mm. Dad wants you to come home. Dad, just come home. Dad, well, what do I want to have? Just, just come home. Dad wants you to come home. That's beautiful. As I was listening to the story, I thought, you know, what, what, you know, I, you always look at the other pets in the pet store. <laughs> and, and this cat was pretty savvy, you know, figured out how to get his paw through. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah he's the, yeah. And in some respects, we all like look at that and we all go that, yeah, that cat deserved to be in a good home. That cat figured it out. <laughs> and what's cool is that it's not about deserving to be home. Yeah. That it, you know, yes, that cat got, you know, thankfully got picked up by the Wetmore family, but but the mangy the whole, cat in the corner that yeah, nobody the mangy wanted, cat exactly. Jesus picked that cat up. Right? Jesus picks those cats yep. up, and I think the it's not about the deserving piece as much as it is about God's desire for us to be home yeah. with Him, which I think is a really cool thing, in all of this. If, you know, I had a preaching student one time in one of his sermons, he was talking about his own experience and in, in, in his situation, he was pushed out mm. by, by other people in the church. Uh, he was gay and he said that, that his experience he described was that he, that God put a homing device in him. So he was always drawn back, drawn back, drawn back. And he always believed, you know, that that he had a place there because God put that homing device in him and now he's serving in ministry. And so I think that's an interesting thing too. Like you may feel like you're lost. You may feel like you've wandered off the estate, but there's that homing device mm -hmm. yeah. that never stops working. Love that. Well, and I think it's too finding a, a community where you, whatever you, whatever you struggle with, you find a home. I mean, I certainly, I didn't find a home anywhere else until I moved, you know, well, almost before I moved to Florida until I met Heather. And that was just a person, that was a personality of just someone who was very much into Jesus that I just didn't understand. Like it just, it, it was night and day. Like, I don't understand what, why you're doing this because everybody I know that says they believe like you don't act like you. And, and, and I just, there's so many negative, there was so much negative baggage or different experiences. And so I love it that here, like I, there's nobody I wouldn't invite to whole life church and say, you know, whether that's your, your little bit of, you know, Jesus would love to hang out and I'd love to hang out with you. And we'd all love to hang out with you at church, come home. Like you said, Ken, I, I think that's a, that's a huge part. And I think that's a, that's something that we all get to do. Um, even if it's the podcast, I mean, there's a part of that that comes through each week and, I hear people, they tell me all the time, I share this with my coworkers. I share it here and there because I feel like it's an introduction that you can do that's not, uh, that's safe and that's fun and that's, you know, inviting to people and to get a chance to get to know Jesus a little bit better. So I love it that we have that ability to do that here and that it's a safe place. And maybe the best part of the message was home. Um, I felt myself getting a little misty <laughs> when I saw you with your grandma and, you know, the, the old wood cupboards and, you know, <laughs> she's been in this house and my grandma, as, as long as I could remember, they had lived in the same house yeah. uh, since before I was born. So grandma was there over, at least in, through my lifetime, over 45 years. So when you went to grandma's house, you know how it is. No, so that was a story that really resonated yeah. with you then. And, you know, it smells the same, yeah. it looks the same and my girls were pretty small when she had to move out. Uh, finally, when she was, I think, 92, 93, just didn't eat enough. And so you had to be someplace where people were checking on you and those kinds of things. Anyway, <laughs> Ellie like, is that the one that had the big wooden spoons on the wall? You know, things that they remember <laughs> yeah. only being there as kids. But it was just to to feel that home. And I, at, at first, I kind of got caught up in it. And I was just remembering my uh, my grandma, Virginia, but just sharing in that whole memory. And then I started to think about some other friends in my life that I know don't have those. Yeah. 
that they don't have that warm and fuzzy. They don't even have it from, man, they don't even have it from their yeah. parents or their home. And you talked about how many homes you've lived in. I lost count at about 22. There was a portion of my life where I moved a lot. And then, <laughs> uh, we're not going to go to that, any of those stories. But, and then um, asking in the chat asked, and I, I thought this came in really was real poignant because it was, but I came in right about as you were talking about that. And they said, Thanksgiving is very difficult for some people because of unhealthy family dynamics. There are those who claim to be believers who are unhealthy for me to be around. How can I look forward to being in God's house with these other believers? And I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a really honest and brutal question to have to answer. We all have family dynamics, but that's, that's pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I was, I heard that question and I, I thought, you know, if you're, first of all, I think we need to shout out to those, if those that believe that they are the, they are the family, they are the ones, they are the, much like the older brother who considers himself to be, I think if you're, if there are people in your family who you see as outcasts or you want to keep them as outcasts, I think it's really important that you reassess why the home is there, why you have a home, why you even, you know, why, if it's, if you're the gatekeeper, and I think that all of us sometimes look at protectionism as being a part of our role in, mm, yeah. in, even in church, if that's the role, I really would plead with you to, to reconsider your role as part of the family, so to speak, or part of that home. And if you're not feeling like you're welcome or if you don't belong, then I, then I do think it would be good to reconsider how you understand grace to those as well, Hmm. because it is important that you have that family and you don't isolate you. The younger brother coming back home knew he was going to have to deal with the older brother. (laughs) Yeah. But he was content to know where he felt like, hey, I'll just, I don't care if I'm a servant. That It's better to be a servant here. But the father, the father has a completely different picture of what it means to be home. And I think that's where we have to look at is what is home for? Yeah. As opposed to separating ourselves and keeping ourselves separate. Wow. Reassessing. That's a, that's kind of, I mean, that's a, a bold thing to have to do. Yeah. If, if I mean, it's... I think community is huge for us. I mean, nobody grows on their own. Very matter of fact, I don't, I don't know of anybody that grows on their own. Man, it just puts a, it just paints that picture even, even more vibrantly of how many people that are, are, would resonate with that maybe growing up or maybe that's where they've been in or their situation is now. And, um, that's a, that's just a tough place to be to try to, you know, we've all, we've all been to the Thanksgiving dinner that you get invited to and you're <laughs> like, Oh, wow. I did not realize this was the family dynamic that happened here. <laughs> Something else on the menu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and, um, and we've all had uh, probably in our own lives, you know, people that we like, okay, we know that we can't talk about this, this or this with certain people or, you know, whatever, but I mean, reassessing at least, you know, like even for a day, sometimes I know you. It's 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 hard to not to to let things go sometimes, but that's a that's a really cool way to think about it. Though I like that. You know, there's always going to be different personalities, and if there is, I mean, you know, somebody says I just can't talk to that person, or I just that you know, and there are people that are hard to talk to, but. Um, Having if if it is an issue that you can you know do it having those one on one conversations and sharing your ownership in the whole piece. Hey, I'm going to own this. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can, but I'm going to own my part on this, and that's maybe all it can be. Maybe that's it. Yeah, seems like now's the time of year though that maybe there's a little bit of extra room in the in the hearts or you would maybe hope so as you know christmas is right around, right around the corner and you know if you survived thanksgiving and didn't uh, weren't able to pull it off maybe christmas is a second chance for this time of year but i think my favorite part of the whole message this week actually came in the sermon outline Mm. for the message. And it's uh, actually, I wrote it in my handwriting and I, I put it in my truck and it's on my dash. Um, 
just because, again, this message really, really hit home for me. And it said, God doesn't wait in his house for you. He pursues you with goodness and unfailing love. He offers you the choice to live with him forever. And just, and again, sometimes you just, you, you can read those words at a different time or a different place. And it's like, okay, I can read English. I know what it means. But then when you really start to look back and you, you, you find those people that have been, or have shown you that God doesn't wait in his house, that he, he pursues you and you see that in their life and they help you realize it and, and internalize it and believe it. And it becomes much different than, than what you initially may have thought or what you may have felt. And so just, if there was one thing that I would like want to leave anyone with this week or this, and maybe through this sermon series is God doesn't wait for you. And the, I love that we finished with the whole pursue angle because mm-hmm. I don't, I I don't understand why the good, what the goodness looks like, or is it, you know, is it disguised? Is it in cloaking, you know, some kind of cloaking device? Why we run from something that we should know in our hearts, at least once we get to a certain stage that this is, this is going to be good, even if it's doesn't seem like it, but I don't, I don't know why the continued running (laughs) is a thing, but Melanie is like, you're smiling. I'm just smiling because I think, (laughs) don't we all have a tendency to self-sabotage in some, in (sighs) some on some level. If we knew, of course, that's, you know, if that's a lot of ifs and a lot of ands and a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda, but it just seems odd that once like, again, this message really did hit home for me. And I've just, I've been running this over my mind and it's like all the different things I can look back in my life. Like why, why run away from what you know is going, you know, once you know it, and I mean, I don't know how you, you, you judge it before then because, but once you're convicted of it and you know it, you always get through whatever it is that you were going through and you come out the other side and go, wow, I am so glad that even though I yelled at God, (laughs) I was upset. I was mad. I didn't, I was upset with myself. My self-talk was no good. All the different things that we go through, but I mean, it's so much better when God is there walking with you and you know, he's walking with you, even if you don't want to admit it at the time, because you're a little angry or whatever, it always comes out. Okay. At the end and better than if you hadn't, walked with him through that. So I, I just pondering questions. I know there aren't answers to, but it, uh, it just, it's, it, it happy. And then a little frustration right at the end. Like, why, why do we run? Um, you know, we, we, I think t- uh, Ken's um, description of chasing Zag down with his <laughs> That's true. goodness yes, and mercy yes. <laughs> I did, I forgot and a uh, bitter pill, which <laughs> gets pill. jammed down his throat. I, I wonder, you know, I think it's, we think about God's goodness and mercy, like this serious, you know, pursuit and, you know, like <laughs> capture, but, you know, sometimes I wonder if we could just even picture it as like, maybe you're, you're, maybe you're just f- playing a frolicking game of hide and seek. Like maybe it's not always serious and terrible. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's fun sometimes to be pursued by God's goodness and mercy and to be found by God's goodness and mercy. I'm glad you said that because I feel often the way I think I feel about God or how I imagine what he thinks about me and our relationship and the things that he knows I'm going to screw up on. And I know I'm going to screw up on. And I feel like sometimes we just, it's like having a cup of coffee with a friend and like, man, blew that one. Like, Yeah, you did. You know, or he spits out the coffee because he's like, I can't believe you just said that with a straight face to me. Come on. How, we've known each other. How long now? Nobody could ever spit out your coffee, Randy. Well, that's true. You have good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm glad you said that because I do feel like we make it to be out like this. It's a life and death and like the, you know, poor Zag with getting the pill jammed down his throat far enough. And if you've ever had to give medicine to a dog, well, will he take it? He won't take it in like peanut butter? No. Nothing? You can't hide Uh, it? This this cat is beyond (laughs) wily. I have, we have put that pill into all kinds of, and he figures out a way to eat everything. And I don't even know, it's not even possible and he does it. Anyway, he's very wily that way. Very wily. It just, I just. The only thing that works is to, you got to grab him. You turn him on his (laughs) back. You hold his head up against your chest. You put your fingers right between those two little jaws of his, and then you just. Hope that he opens it wide enough to get a good drop down into the deep, into the, you know, anyway. Well, I'll have to admit, I pictured you as you're telling the story because I was yeah. I was laughing. Uh, Emmy and I got here just in time for song service this <laughs> with the, uh, to worship this week. And then we when we started with the story, she was laughing. She thought it was funny. And I'm just picturing you 
in the uh, in your in your Christmas onesie yeah. that we went and judged doors with right. last year, and and <laughs> why, that was the picture I had of Ken chasing Zag. I'm glad around. that was the picture then. Yeah, no, it was good. I, I just made, it just helped me uh, <laughs> it helped me out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we did have uh, two comments that came in um, afterwards, and one was from anonymous. Said, I think I'm realizing there will be a a person or persons in heaven who have inflicted some type of pain on me. I can also flip that narrative too, that I have hurt or inflicted pain on them. I have to trust that God knows all and understands all, and he'll make everything right and he will wipe away every tear. And I, I hope that, uh, I mean, I agree with you anonymous and I hope that that is the case and that you're right and I'm right. And that's how it's going to go. Cause it's, uh, it would be odd to think of, although we had a, you guys kind of got into a discussion about yeah. what you thought, he, you know, what we think heaven might be like, and that there might be some heaven be is going to be a big place, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that Ken fella? Oh, I saw him heading down the river of life over there. He was in a, he was in a kayak. He's on the east side. <laughs> yeah, <he's, laughs> we'll be on the west side. <laughs> he's on the west side. Oh man. So, and then I know that we had, um, I, I think this got answered in either first or second, I don't remember, but I wanted to bring this question up as well because I thought this was a good um, a good question that some other people I'm sure have thought of or have struggled with. And it was from Trafina. She said, can God's goodness manifest as a tragedy that we learn from and the results in be- that results in better outcomes for us? And because um, I feel like sometimes we also, along with that, maybe, you know, God chasing us maybe is a little scary but is that, you know, can it turn into a tragedy that would come into a better outcome for me if I can just survive it? The whole point of Christ's redemption is that we are lost <laughs> in a pretty big tragedy. Uh, you know, I, I, I do think that God is the, the, the reason why God continues to work on all of us is because he's, you know, he sees life from a completely different perspective than we do. We always see things as problems that need to be solved or um, issues in our lives that need to be become better and so forth. Whereas I think, he, you know, he sees the relationship that he has with us or, and he just wants us to keep following and the road is different at times. The road is sometimes like what some people may say, that road's easy. I can follow Jesus. And then sometimes the road on all, but, but following Jesus doesn't always, and you know, doesn't always mean that I have a smooth path. It's, it's going to be some rough. So in terms of that question, yeah, I think every single path for different people is is going to is going to be you know what may be a tragedy for you sure is not going to be the same tragedy or tragic situation in my life so i'm not sure if goodness can become tragedy but the tragedy is is sin it's already here it's in all of us so mm-hmm. without god's goodness to think of it without that ooh, yeah that's i mean i i don't want to diminish other people's pain because no, sure. everybody goes through different types of struggles, yeah. but suffering is part of all of our lives. Yeah. I hate to think about it sometimes, but that's the way, that's the way it seems to be, but that's okay. Cause he's still pursuing us. And that's what, uh, man, and you can live with the goodness and unfailing love. I love it. That was, um, mm. Not gonna for not gonna lose that one for a while, I'm sure. All right, next week it's December already. Christmas, come on. Yeah, we Here know we it are. is because we made the transition from Thanksgiving mm-hmm. yep. to Christmas in our uh, worship music. Worship music. So, right. You know that last uh, <laughs> last song in the music set right before the sermon went right from Thanksgiving right into uh, Christmas right into song. Christmas. Yep. So yeah. you have the a- lights changed and everything. I knew it was on. Now at that point, yep. I, we I- we didn't do subtlety this week. No, <laughs> and. I was a little nervous since Emmy and I were at first service. And as soon as the Christmas came on, she started jumping up and down and raising, 
pumping your fists like, yeah, Christmas. And I'm looking around. Like, like everyone around us were like looking and I'm like, oh, sorry. Oh but my goodness. The kid gets a little excited. For everybody about, they were all excited loves her. Too. Like, everybody yeah, loves her like, excitement. Oh my There's a reason why you need to call her sparkle. Is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing that gets her more excited or happy than the thought of Christmas and, Good. and everything that goes with it. And So I'm not going to tell on anybody, but I did see a couple of adults in the did back you? who were doing the same thing. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited for her anyway. So we're going to be next week. We start a new series, Come and See. And there's, so what? We only have, what, four of four. those, right? Because mm-hmm. that's Christmas. And then we're. Come and see what God has done. Come and see what God will do. Come and see. As, come and see what God can, can do. Can do. There we go. Can do. Will that's, do. Has, has done. done. Wants you to do. And can do is this week, right? Yep. Can awesome. Do. Yep. And then, so that's four. And then after that, then it's what we launched a new year, new theme, new everything. Now oh. that we have our last service of the calendar year. Oh, that's right. We, we did that to do the a kind of a year in review church service. Reflections. That's yeah. right. We did do the reflections yeah. last year. I forgot about yeah. that. Well, that's a fun one. So we'll put a nice little bow on our uh, twenty twenty three. Follow me. Follow uh, me. Theme for this year, and uh, then and take a look at where we've come and. In 2023, and look forward to uh, all that's going to come in 2024. Can you believe it? We're unbelievable. Just about a month away from that. See, and I think what we need to do, I'm thinking the last thing that we need to do is we've got four weeks until Christmas, approximately. Uh, what is today? Today's the 28th, so not quite four weeks, but we're we're close, right? 20. I think we have three Saturdays. Right, and then it's Christmas. Yeah, but I'm thinking, like you know, if you guys have uh, like a your favorite recipe for Christmas, whether it's a cookie or a pie or a pastry Make it or something and bring it like by. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the church office is on second floor. And, uh, you know, if nobody's here, you can leave it by the door. The, we don't have we don't have critters or anything here. But we, it'll be fine until we get here. No. But uh, send me a recipe. I would like to try something new for Christmas. Is you like a Christmas cookie or a... Or better uh, yet, make it. And, and share the recipes. <laughs> just, yeah. So we don't. Want, if we make it, we won't know whether it tastes as good as what you made. No, that's <laughs> true. Because so, we might screw up the recipe. Absolutely. So. And just because you have the recipe doesn't mean it turns out. Because it's it's the love that goes into it. And, you know. And if you're listening to somewhere far in the distant world, I, I'm told that you can ship things too. So <gasps> that's twenty eight hundred North North Orange, Orange Avenue, Avenue, Orlando three two eight zero four. See, yeah. we don't attention, we don't, Randy. We're not here to. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's asking for funds. It's just food. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just food. Just feed us. Now, like my, my grandmother, I will share the recipe. So and maybe next week's uh, show notes, uh, she makes something called icebox cookies. And it was my grandfather's favorite. And if hmm. you're an ice cream fan, the only way to eat these cookies is you keep them in the icebox. And they're, I mean, they're no good for you. I'll so just that's easier you. in Wisconsin, this, this particular. Yeah, the icebox, you can just throw them outside the back door and they'll, they'll be fine. Just put them in the snow yeah. bank. Yeah. Uh, but you eat them with ice cream is the absolute best way. It's like take mm. a little cookie, take your favorite ice cream and eat them together. And my, my mm. grandpa Jim was always just like, oh, mother. These are a good batch of icebox cookies. All like every Christmas, bar none, she'd get out those cookies, and Grandpa was happy. And those have become my favorite, like ever. That's cool. Heart, I love uh, it. Christmas treats. So I'll put those in the in the show notes for you next week. By and, the way, congratulations! Uh, I think last week on the podcast we were talking about, or maybe it was before the podcast began. I can't remember that we were saying that your uh, your football team didn't have much of a chance. But, right, uh, that's right. I forgot about well, it. Things, yeah. things went. We're uh, getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, we're, Randy forgot about it so much he wore his Packers jacket to staff meeting this yeah. morning. Yeah, we <laughs> did. Yeah, that's how much he forgot. <laughs> yeah, we're back in the playoff I'm, I'm going to be heading up for, to Lambeau next uh, couple weeks from now. Are oh, you man. serious? Are you going to actually go to a game? Yep. Yeah, tickets nice. for which one? My son did it for my birthday. Oh. That is very cool. JT, yeah. you, you have... JT you, is smart. You are the man. Yeah. You are the man. Who you seen play? Bucks. Oh, the ice cold. Look, look at that. Look at that. are coming. So you're going to feel torn at all about who to vote or how to <laughs> no, vote No, I won't for, feel or? torn at no, all. But, no, no, no. but he, he will because he kind of is because of... He growing up in a Packer sure. home, but he's he says, "Dad, I'm I live in Florida. I gotta be a Bucks fan." So yeah, there you he's go. he's gonna be torn. His is mom he, is a Bear fan. So has he ever been to Lambo? 
No, never been. He's in been. for a treat then. So we're going to do the Have whole you? thing, Chef? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Even the yeah. most diehard people, one of the, I won't t- I won't say his name on the podcast because uh, I don't want to embarrass him, but his wife borrowed my cheese head a couple years ago to have pictures <laughs> taken of their youngest child nice. in a Packers uniform and my cheese head. And uh, he's a big Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> okay. So this was, he's like, he's like, he sent a picture back to me. He's like, thanks a lot, bro. He's like, now there's a picture of my kid up above the mantle on the fireplace in Packers gear and a cheese head. <laughs> then he went to, then the, 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 the pinnacle of it all was she got him for his birthday. The last time the Packers played Dallas in Lambeau, he got to go to Lambeau field and he's like, all right, it's confession time. He's like, I take back everything I've ever said about Lambeau Field or the Packers. He's like, your fans, way better than Dallas fans. <laughs> and he said, the stadium. Whoa. He's like, he's been to quite a few stadiums. And he's like, man, even Uncle Jarrah's world, he's like, it doesn't compare to Lambeau. He's like, this is unique. It's the best seat. No matter where you sit, the only place I haven't sat is in the new bleachers in the south end zone. I have not been in the mm. in the seats up there. But otherwise, any place in the bowl is like better than any seat in any other stadium. It's just, it's that good. Well, I'm glad yeah. that family is no longer unequally yoked. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But anyway, so man, good for you. I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Looking forward we're, to it. One of these years we're going to have to get, Ellie's been waiting patiently to go. So maybe, maybe next year we'll mm. find a place to go, but that's awesome. So, all right. Well, I guess uh, I will put that recipe next. So think about recipes and you can send more than one. I mean, if you've got you something. Can, yeah. Drop the food off as well. <laughs> not interested in your recipe. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> you could, maybe you could do it. What, can we, if we put a limit, could we put a little like, hey, we'll cover the shipping up to, you know, five, 10 bucks? Just shoot, just, just shoot Randy a note. I mean, if you're wanting to ship it, just shoot him a note. Well, it depends on what you're shipping. <laughs> oh, if man. it's, if well, it's no. durian, no, we're not, oh, we're, wow. we're not, not, not going to do gonna that. We're going to judge you but, before we pay for the shipping. I, mean, I love it. It is what it is. I mean, oh, oh, man. Jesus love is free, but um, <laughs> around here we will do a little bit of judgment on uh, things. So. Oh man, that's awesome. All if right. you're making us pay to ship it, if you want to ship it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Just ship it. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, this has turned out to be a fantastic episode, just as always. So thanks, y'all, for listening, and have a great week. Send those recipes or ship the food. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome.